Aloha and welcome to this video that will hopefully give you some good hints in completing your shell lab in CS415. Now the first thing is this test program that you'll need to download and compile. I recommend creating a new folder inside of your project with the called test and have that include your test.cpp file and you can download that from Canvas or and then just copy and paste the contents uh, or the code from that file into a uh, into here and then you can compile it with the g++ compile command and run it like this and you can see that each one of the arguments gets printed out with asterisks on each side and that will help you test uh, your shell program to see if it can launch up a new program and correctly pass the arguments to it now starting with your Learn C lab, what you'll want to do is you'll want to put a infinite while loop around all the code that you have from your Learn C lab. So you basically have a program that looks like this. First, you, you set the token size to zero, and that will help you reset your array each time. You um, get a working get your working directory and print out a prompt with the working directory inside of it. Then you read in a line you tokenize the line or split it apart by spaces, and then you can have a for each loop like you did in your original lab, print out each token, uh, and that can be really helpful for debug purposes, um, and then you can comment it out when you're done. And then uh, you want to check the first token of your array of tokens to see if it's equal to exit. If it's equal to exit, you can just return from main. So if you run return, you'll exit the main method and that will quit your program, or you can call a function called exit that will quit your program. So if it's not exit, check to see if it's the next command, echo. And um, if it's echo, then you'll just need to print out the rest of the tokens, not the first one, but the rest of the tokens. And hopefully you know how to do that because you already uh, printed out your tokens from the Learn C lab. And then you want to do an else if for each command. So you have the make directory, uh, remove directory, change directory, and then the ls command. Now I'll tell you a little bit more about how to accomplish the ls command a little later. And then um, if it doesn't match, if the first uh, token doesn't match any of your known commands, the next thing you're going to do is, and you, don't, you don't recognize the command, so you're gonna assume that it is some other executable that you want to launch and run. So, um, if, it's, if you don't recognize the command, you can want to search to see if you want to redirect the output. If you find the greater than sign, then you want to call execute redirect, which I'll talk about later. And if you don't find it, then you just want to call execute normal. Now let's talk about your current working directory. You have two options here. You can keep track of what directory you're in all on your own by creating a string variable that contains the path that you want to be your working directory. And then as they change directories, you can modify that variable. Now that's probably a lot more work. You can uh, you let the underneath the operating system keep track of the current working directory. And that's what I recommend. Now there are a lot of uh, system calls that you can make. Now a system call is a function that you call or the ask the operating system to do for you. And in fact, there's a system call that helps you get the current working directory. There's also a system call to create directories, to remove directories, and to change your current work working directory. So you should just use all those system calls. Now, it is really important uh, that you do not use some command called system. So there is a command called system. It takes a string as input, and it just runs that. But that turns your entire program into just a wrapper for the system call. So you cannot use the system call in, in your program anywhere. You have to use the other system calls that you can. So there's a system call to get the current working directory. There's a system call to change the current working directory and so on. So you can search Google. Um, system or C because you're doing this in the C programming language right here. You can search um, the web and find a way to get the current working directory or to change the current working directory or to make a directory or to remove a directory. 
and you'll probably find examples. Another thing that you might find it helpful are the man pages. So just in the terminal window, you could type man mkdir. Now, if you just do that, it actually tells you the make directory that you can run on the command line. So not so helpful, but if you do man dash a mkdir, and dash a stands for all, you get this first one. And when you press the Q to quit, then uh, press enter to review the next one. And now you get the mkdir that you can use in your C program. And this just it describes that you can use your arrows to go down and read the description. It tells you what the inputs are, what the outputs are, and it's set and everything else. It also tells you what you have to include in your C program to be able to use this command. So you, we have to include both the stat.h and the types.h to be able to use this uh, make dir function call that'll allow you to make direct make the directory so again to get out of it out of this you press q to get out of those uh, man pages so for getting the current working directory there's a system call for changing the current working directory so we'll use cd command there's one and there's also one to make it which i just showed you and one to remove a directory so just uh, one other thing that i want to tell you with these system calls is if something doesn't go right, it, it doesn't crash your program. It just kind of returns an error message. So you'll see sample programs when you search on the web with that error message. But and it, we could go down here, and it actually tells you the different errors that you can get. Now, the way that uh, you can uh, get these error messages is, and if you notice here, if makedir returns zero on success, so if it returns zero, then you know mkdir worked. If it returned negative, one, then you know it didn't work. So you want to do that in an if statement. Did make dir work? If so, then you then you know that the command worked. If you got a negative one, then you know that there was an error. And these are the different error codes you can get uh, right in through here. And there's quite a lot. Now you don't have to really worry about that. There is a p error function that you can use. So you check for each command like. The system call that you make, if it works, then you skip over it. If it doesn't work, then just call this p error, and it will print out a the error message that happened in your terminal window. And that's all you have to do to catch all of your errors. Just see if it worked. If it does, move on. If it doesn't, call p error, and you'll get the error message printed out. And that's a, and it's actually a really nice format, so you don't even have to worry about uh, editing the format at all. So now let's talk about listing out all the files in a directory. I've uh, uploaded a, a directory.c file, which is uh, just some uh, code that shows you how to print out the, all the files in a directory. So you could copy and paste this main function in here and rename it to something else. And then, of course, you don't want to take in these as inputs. You probably just want to take in a char star um, as an input, and that's the directory that you want to print out. Now, if you just do um, ls on a normal ter terminal window, then it will print out the contents of the current working directory. So in your program up here, if the command is ls, you want to check to see if they included another token that's the folder that you want to print out the contents of. If they didn't, then just use uh, period as the current working directory. So remember, a two period means go up a directory, and a period means the directory you're in. So if you just pass in period as uh, when you go to open the directory, notice they'll use an argv sub one as the name of the directory they want to open. But if you just put a quote marks period in there, then it'll open the current working directory. And you can modify this, uh, make sure you print it out in the format that you want. You might want to get rid of some weird error messages in there, but to make your LS look nice. Now, the final thing I'll show you how to do is um, when to launch a separate process. So this isn't a built-in command into your shell. You don't recognize the command, so you're go just going to try to launch a process. And to do that, I have included execute.c in your files on Canvas, so you can download that. And um, this right here is hard coding 
um, a tokens array that you hopefully created by part reading an input and parsing it. So this is just hard coding. And by the way, we're running the LS program. So most uh, shells do not have LS and CD built into them like we're doing. They actually have little tiny programs that accomplish small tasks. And so the program to print out the contents of a directory is located in slash bin slash LS on most systems. So and so this is an LS dash L is the, the argument. And remember that null token I told you to put at the end of your tokens? That's this right there. So normally you'd only do one of these, just execute normal or execute redirect. Now, uh, let me talk about this execute normal code. So um, what we're going to do is, we're, we, this is just initializing variables, but we're going to call fork. And what that does is it makes a copy of the current running process. So the shell program that you wrote and are running right now gets copied and now there's two shell programs running. One's gonna be the parent, one is gonna be the child. So um, this is, if if this uh, returns negative one, it just didn't work. So, um, but, um, and you can use pair here to figure out why, but um, if, the process ID is equal to zero, then we know that we're in the child thread. And if it's not, then we, or not the child thread, we should say child process here. So now we know we're in the child process. And if, um, if we're not the child process, then we're the parent. So the parent is the original and all it's gonna do is just wait. And the child is gonna go on and execute the program that you, that the person typed into the command prompt. Now the execute redirect is almost the same, except for the child is gonna do some code to redirect the output. So I'll talk about that a little bit later. So I'm gonna explain what fork does. What fork does is you, you have your parent process and it's gonna call the function fork. And what that will do is take all of the memory of the parent and duplicate it and make an exact copy of the memory of all the process and everything. So now there are two processes that are almost exactly alike. There's only one small difference. Since the parent was the one that called fork, then his process ID is going to be, this PID variable is going to equal a, or be a pointer that, that points to the child process. But the child, I, its PID will be equal to zero. So that's how we could tell the parent process from the child process. So what we're going to do next is we're going to call execvp, which will erase all of the memory in the child and replace it with a new program. Now, now that new program will run. And what the parent is gonna do while the new program is running is it's just gonna sit in a loop waiting for the child to finish. Now, as soon as the child finishes and quits, then the parent will get out of the loop and hopefully you go back and prompt the user to enter in the next command. So in your main program, what you wanna do is if you don't recognize the process, you're gonna fork and launch and execute a different process. And then, uh, but before you do that, you wanna search for this greater than sign, and that means you wanna redirect the output. So what the, and redirecting the output means all the output, everything that you print out will go to a file instead of onto the terminal window itself. So that's what the execute redirect function does. And basically we, this dupe uh, takes the um, file table and every process has a file table that's running and um, the position zero is the input, position one is the output and position three is the errors. So basically we're saving away the normal terminal output and then we're gonna open up some other file and you can see I've hard coded that file right here. So we're gonna open it up for reading and then we're gonna copy that file into position one. So now when you call, when the program calls print out or print F to the standard output, it will print it to the file instead of to the terminal window. Then we call execvp, 
which erases the memory, but not this file table that we just changed. And now all that output goes to a file and it thinks it's putting it to the standard output, but instead, because we modify the file table, it's gonna print it out to a file. So uh, one thing to remind you is you probably want to forward declare your functions, unless you wanna put all the functions up above and then your main down below. But um, then notice the execute normal is gonna take in a char star star. If you notice, that's the same thing as the arrays that programs take in. So this is just an array of strings. So all you need to do is pass in your tokenized array and then execute redirect, you pass in the tokenized array but you're also gonna pass in the name of the file that you want to print that out. Now you're gonna to have to pull that out. It's gonna be one of the tokens, the token after the greater than sign. And so that will be the name of the file that you uh, want to put your output into. So you can go ahead and copy and paste those functions in, and then you'll just have to modify them because you can't just hard code the output of your file uh, to this location because you probably don't even have that uh, directory right there. It should get the output of the file from the arguments the person typed in their program. So um, after you've done that, hopefully you'll have a complete working program. And if you do it right, you can launch all the other executables on your system inside of your shell. Now it's not too user friendly because you can't go through the history um, and you can't even press your arrow keys. Uh, you'll get some weird symbols on it, but hopefully this will be a fun lab You'll learn how to use those system calls and uh, use C strings and arrays. So hopefully you get started early so you can ask me any questions and good luck.